Attention, this video will contain cursing, mature and immature jokes, blood, violence, gore, and flashing lights. If you get offended, multi first button will not be responsible. Remember, you clicked it and been warned. Don't say I didn't tell you so. Please enjoy the show. Many worlds. Many problems. One man has to fix it all. And that one man is known as Spy. <laughs> Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome back to the channel and today I am going to be doing a review on two games that came out last year and they are known as Cyberpunk 2077 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be talking about the pros, the cons and their pro cons with my own opinions of course. And I'm going to explain to you guys why I think, why I think that I do. But before I um, go any further, I'm going to explain um, one thing. So, if you're wondering what a pro con, a pro con is, a pro con is okay. So try to imagine to, um, so. Imagine that you guys were back at school and you saw those two circles, right? And then those two circles are connected to each other that makes a circle in the middle. That's that's the similar similar circle thing. That is technically what a pro con is when you're doing doing the pro and the and the the, the pro by itself and then the cons by itself and you put them together. So Pro cons are basically are basically good and bad at the same time. That's the reason why that's the reason why I call them pro cons. Because not only that, I also call them pro cons because you know no one else because uh, there's going to be uh, someone else that's not going to agree with what I'm gonna about to say. So that's the reason why I'm gonna put those in my pro con my pro con uh section. But um yeah. But anyways, let's get to the review. Alright. First game I'm going to review right now is Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. So uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is a future heroic game that has an open world map feature in it. Um, this game is like this game is like GTA and Assassin's Creed made a baby together, practically. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why I think so. So Cyberpunk 2077 is a game where you can hijack, steal kill, destroy, and have a, and you also get a wanted, there's a wanted feature on there too, that has like a bunch of law enforcement going after you. And that's why that's, sim that's why Cyberpunk is similar to GTA in the sorts. Now, in the game, there's also there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of gore, and then there's also a lot of parkour. Um, you might even might you even you might even find a hook cable in 
in there somewhere. Maybe. And plus, the main lane in the game is like your character was raised by a pack of wolves. I mean, the main lane in that game is is uh, so barbaric. <laughs> uh, but um, the other uh, feature is that your vision gets gray and red when you're on the verge of dying. Now, that's what makes it similar to Assassin's Creed. Now, you put GTA and Assassin's Creed together, what do you get? Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> but, like I said, it's just only my opinion. Everyone else has their own opinions. So, please be respectful down in the comments. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Now I'm going to get to the pros. The pros, the cons, and the pro cons about this game. So the pros are the graphics. Um, the graphics are average. I'm not going to say they're great. I'm going to say they're average. Because Cyberpunk 2077 did have glitches. Um, I don't know if it still has glitches for anyone else, but with me, it only had only one glitch, and that's just uh, that's just uh, making my character float when uh, when she's running. But after she's done running, she goes back to the ground, and then she runs like a normal person after a while. <laughs> but that that's been fixed, thank God. But I also thought it was pretty funny too, so. I didn't really mind the glitches because the glitches actually did make me laugh. All right. The other pro about this game is the story mode is great. It has many different types of emotional events during the during the story. I would I would tell you about the story, but I don't want to uh, spoil I don't want to spoil the story of the game for anyone because it's still technically a new game, even though it just came, even though it did came out last year, and now there's new games out, but still it's still kind of new in a way. So um, yeah. Anyways, and um, the other pro is everything does look accurate for a future for the futuristic game. And what I mean by that is the vehicles look so futuristic that you can't even that you can't even recognize them. I mean, yeah, there's still drivable cars that you can drive on the ground. They're not, you know, f flying cars. I mean, there are some flying cars in the game. But most of the people that flies flies those cars are mostly the law enforcement so you can't really steal those i at least i don't think but that's just me anyways i don't know uh i don't know if anyone at managed to steal one of those if they did if you guys did props to you <laughs> but uh anyways the buildings the buildings are futuristic and the people are now let's get to the people the people, they have robotic appendages and also robotic features underneath their skin. Um, I don't know if it's like, if they're actually people with robot features or something. I don't really know. But all I know is that they have, some people have... Um, some cyber connect cyber kinetic uh, feature to their to their body either in their face their eyes um their legs their hands their arms anywhere on their body only thing that's not um totally cyber kinetic is their heads so um i believe they are technically actual people with with the robotic appendages in them but that's up to you guys you guys can 
can debate about that all you want. <laughs> I'm just saying my opinion here. But, uh, yeah. And uh, not only that, there are also some people in the game that does not have those um, those cyberkinetic appendages. And those are the people that live outside of Night City. So, yeah. Now, the other pro is the blood animations. The blood animations are great. When you when you fire your round into an enemy or slice them up with your blade or sword, the blood spews out like an act like like it would with an actual person. And when their body falls to the ground, the blood leaks out their body like an actual person would. So that's great. And the sound effects are spot on. The walking sound effects, you can literally hear all the footsteps. Uh, the vehicle sound effects, the vehicles actually sound like actual vehicles, which is good. And then the nature side, uh, then the nature sound effects are good. The wind sound effects are good. The raining sound effects is good. Storms is good. All the sound effects are are practically all hundred percent accurate. And now, the voice actors in the game are great too. Um, v, the main character, she has two voice actors. She has a male. She has a male voice actor, and she has a female voice actor. And the reason why I'm saying she is because my character that I created is a she. Um, that's the reason why. That's the reason why it's it's more emotional for my character because because um, well she connects well um she connects she connects to the she connects to the people very well and not only that when you connect with the with the people you also connect with your own character as well. So technically the character is like your eyes or something and it feels like you're actually in it, which is really cool. But um Yeah, and um every now and then every now and then playing playing as a female character is is like, you know, a nice change of pace every once in a while. Because, you know, it's something different. It just you know you want to see what what's going on with a female's point of view, like the what's going on with the female character. Now, if you want to see what's going on with the male character, switch it to the male character and see see uh, see his point of view. It's practically the same thing with many other uh, different types of games that you can customize your characters in. And another another. Um, Pro is the water effects. The water effects is really spot on. Um, when you jump in the water, it splashes, which is good. You can actually swim in it, which is really good. And then there's the other pro. You can customize your character like what I said earlier. When you first begin playing the game, you get to this... Uh, The screen, this, the screen place, and it will give you a bunch of options for your character, a bunch of features you want to give your character, and other stuff. Now, let's get to the cons. Everything in everything is in first person except when driving. Now. I don't really necessarily call it a con, but, you know, some people will probably call it a con because, you know, some people like, like third person, which I don't, which I don't blame them. I, I like third person too, when it comes to, uh, games like GTA or Assassin's Creed, but don't get me wrong, I do like I do like it as a first person. And I'm just glad 
I'm just glad driving a vehicle isn't just for, uh, first person. You could switch it to third person, so that way you know you can see where you're going and stuff. Because you know, I know there are there are a lot of gamers that's that's um watching my video right now, and I'm pretty sure you can agree with me that play uh, driving a car in first person is pretty hard. And uh, especially if you're driving traffic in, in a game. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Now, the other con is you need to level up just to do certain things like carjacking. Um, this is a con that I came that that I came across on when I was when I was uh, when I first started playing the game. I tried to hijack this car and I couldn't because I need to I need to level up first. And then breaking down doors, you can't do that either and unless if you go level up first. I was like, the heck man. And then the other con is when your character is maxed out of items, you can't run or jump. You walk like a tank. Similar to similar to Fallout. If you collect way too much stuff, you start walking like a tank. Which really sucks. And not only that, not only that, you'd be very more vulnerable to the enemy. Now let's get to the pro cons. The first pro con is our glitches. Like I said earlier, I don't really mind glitches because to me they are pretty funny and and I do kind of enjoy them. It just makes me it just makes me laugh a little bit. I mean I know other I know other players probably do get aggravated about it aggravated about it, but I don't I just thought I just think it's funny. And then the other pro con is the vehicles drive like actual vehicles in real life which is true um when i when i'm playing when i'm playing the when i'm playing a when i'm playing cyberpunk 2077 the car actually drives like an actual car no joke um when you're going when you're going when you're just not even pressing the when you're not even pressing the 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 go button or the trigger button you're practically just going with the speed limit which is actually pretty cool in my opinion but like i said not everyone's going to agree with it that's the reason why i put in pro cons um some people don't don't like that feature some people do another pro con there is a lot of nudity and a lot of adult content, and it shows everything in the game. And I mean it shows everything. I'm not going to go into details because I don't feel like getting blocked on YouTube, so yeah. But yeah, they'll show everything in, uh, in Cyberpunk. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't mind it. But there are going to be some people who do. And I just want to give you guys a heads up. If you want to play this game, make sure you're 18, uh, 18 of, make sure you're 18 years of age or older. Because trust me, if, if you're young, if you're like a minor and you're really young and when your mom but, uh, bursts in your room and sees you playing that game, I'm pretty sure she's going to confiscate that console from you or your PC. <laughs> that is if they that is if they w will. I don't really know what's going on in the world nowadays. But anyways, the other pro con are the graphics. Like I said earlier, graphics are were average, but uh, they do glitch from time to time. 
like like I said earlier, when I played with my character, only time when she glitched was only time when she ran. And she when she was glitching, she she floats like a I don't know, like a like a person put her on a stick and started uh swinging her around like like a torch or something. <laughs> Which I thought was pretty funny, but it was an easy fix too. All I had to do is just jump a little bit, jump a few times, and then she was back to normal. So yeah, that's it with the with the cons and the pros, the cons and the pro cons. Now, besides the cons, the game is really good. In my opinion, I really enjoy the game. It's it. If I have to give it a rating. I'll just give it a, I would literally give it a, a seven uh, from one to 10. Oh, um, well, let's just give it a seven and a half, a seven and a half from one to 10, because don't get me wrong. It's a really good game. It's a really good game. I enjoy playing it, but like I said, everyone else had their own opinions. And the reason why I give it give it a seven is because of some of the glitches in there and and other things. But uh, yeah, I do I do recommend it to you guys if you guys are eighteen of age or older older. But if you're younger, don't even try to lift that controller, man. Don't even try playing it. Just wait until you turn 18, okay? Please, I don't feel like getting in trouble. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Now, let's get to the other game. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a game that focuses on the Viking culture, which I really do like because not er not everyone is associated with Vikings and stuff, but I am because it is um, it is technically where I did came from, um, but to be honest, I am I am a mix. Of uh, Swedish, Swedish, Finnish, and and Norwegian. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyways, so what this game does, it gives you an idea of how it was like back then during the Viking times. And like any other Assassin's Creed game, it's an open world game. Where you can, where you can sail a ship, but the ship's not an actual sail ship. Well, it is a sail ship, but it's a Viking ship. It has paddles, and then and then it has to sail, which I think was really cool. Um, but it's a bit different because the fighting style is similar to For Honor, if you ask me. Reason why reason why I say that is because is because through the times that I did play the Assassin's Creed, there wasn't really a lot of gore in it. Yeah, there was blood, but there wasn't really too much of gore. But now if we go to Valhalla you can actually decapitate your enemies while fighting in Valhalla, which was very unexpected, but pretty cool at the same time. Because, hey, I'm a violent video gamer. I love violent video games. I love gore. I love, I love, I love violence. And yes, I do admit it. I do admit that I do like violent video games, but. There are some video games that I do play that are not violent. And I'll talk to you guys about that later in the in the video. Alright. 
Now let's get to the pros. Now, the graphics are great. The graphics are phenomenal. It's 100% good. There's no glitch at all, like like Cyberpunk. And um, the map, the map of the game is really good and very accurate too. I wouldn't say very accurate, but it's pretty close accurate. And I enjoyed I enjoyed the the way how they how they made the map, how they made the waterways, how they made the made the villages, how they made the the mountains and other things. I enjoyed it. Now in the game that uh, that puts it different to the other Assassin's Creeds, you can customize your character, which I thought was pretty cool. You can either play as a guy or a female, and and you can customize their features, which is pretty cool. Now, the blood animation in the game is really good. It's very phenomenal, like. Like any other game, and like like any other game, blood leaks out with like how it should, how it should like in like an actual personal wood, which is cool. And the water animations are great as well, especially when you're going in the waterways and then with the water splashing with the ship and stuff. That's pretty cool. I like that. Now the sound effects are really good too. With the birds flying around, chirping, uh, with your feet scratching down the, in the snow, and then with your character jumping in the water, making the splashing noise, and then the swords, and then the axes clashes, and then the spears. It's really good. I like it. Now let's get to the cons. There is no ver there is no voice actor unless you download it. And the other and uh since since my con list is um mostly concentrated on a voice actor, I'm just gonna just I don't wanna, I'm not going to say the whole entire thing because it's all about the voice actor. I really I <laughs> that's a <sighs> You know, I really don't understand why they made a video game that makes you need that that make you need to download a voice actor. But I'll talk more about that later in the video. So let's skip the cons and go to the pro cons because it's all about the voice actor anyway. So it's <laughs> but I'll but I'll. But if you want, I'll no, what? Screw it. I'll, I'll tell you anyways. So you won't know the actual story unless you download the voice actor. And then when you try to download it, there's a possibility that it might won't, that it might not download, like it did with me. It kind of, it kind of made me angry. But um, now let's get to the pro cons. The game has way too many options in the settings. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a lot of options in settings, but if you're a person like me that that gets overwhelmed very easily by by bringing a lot of things and then sometimes you forget those things at the same time because there's way too much then yeah, it is going to be a con to you. But like I said, everyone has their own opinions about the games and stuff. Now, the other con is, the other pro con is, it has an AI narrator in the set in the settings. Now, it's not a bad thing and it's not a good thing either. But it's just there for anyone who wants to hear what the person's saying if they can't see too good um 
which is really which is really good in a way because you know it will help the player play the game if they can't really see the writing as good which is which is accurate which is really cool but it's also it'll also be annoying to the people who can see the words and stuff so that's why i put in, in the pro cons the other pro con is the, the character's strength is in human. Now, let's, um, reason why I put it in pro cons is because not everyone's going to agree that it's cool to have someone that has human, human strength. Now, don't get me wrong, it is cool to have that in, in certain games, but the most the most time that I played the most time that I played um um Assassin's Creed is usually they're they're usually historical accurate in most in most character in most categories but but now when we're going to the Viking area, yeah, Vikings were were strong, were strong men and women, and yes, there were actual women that did fought with the Vikings. They were pretty, they were pretty strong warriors too. In in um, Norse in in Norse mythology, myth, 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 they were to believe they were to believe that most women from the Viking age were actually were actually runaways were runaway Amazons from that Amazon place. They were runaways. They didn't want to go along with those teachings anymore. So because they want to see the whole entire world and and it wasn't really common to see a Amazon woman going with a male because they they didn't trust males at the time but around the Viking time when those runaway one runaway runaway Amazons came them and the Vikings came together and well, new things happened, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a, that's uh, what some people do believe in in North in North uh, mythology. Now, I don't know if that's really accurate, but I just know I just know what what I believe, anyways. But uh, yeah. The other pro con is not understanding the story because of no of not having a VA. Reason why I put that in pro con is because well people can actually download their 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 voice the um, the the voice actor the voice actor pack in the game but for some people it can it won't work like like what happened with me but if i tried to re-download the game it might help but i don't know yet but uh yeah and that's my review now that now that's all the pros and the cons and the pro cons now, don't get me wrong. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a great game. Has a great gameplay, but however, who in the world would create a game that makes you download a voice actor? It doesn't make sense at all. I mean, it doesn't. It really doesn't. I mean, most games that I played had an option to pick a language, yes. But 
they already had voice actors in the game. All you had to do is just pick a language. Then when you pick a language, there you go. You don't have to download anything just to have a voice actor in the game. I mean, yeesh. Talking about laziness, don't you think? But that's my that's my but that's my um my opinion. Now maybe the voice acting probably happened during the during the COVID crisis or I can't really say it now. Um the pandemic crisis and they probably couldn't do the voice acting for the game because of that um that um, six feet apart thing, but now, but all you gotta do is just you know have the has a voice actor record their voice and have them send it to you, and then you can edit it. There you go; it's in the game. You don't have to have it separate and have and and have it downloaded. I mean, that's no, that's ridiculous. And then some people are saying, oh, you just have to, you have to do this with your TV so you can download it. I'm like, I'm not switching my TV settings just for one game. That, I'm not doing that. And that's a big no-no. Because then, then if that's the case, if I want to play a, a game on my spare time, then I had to go back, change the settings, and then play that game. And then when I'm making a gameplay of Valhalla, I gotta go back, change the settings. It's just way too much work. I don't want to do that. I mean, I don't want to do a lot of work just to play a game. I mean, come on. When you're playing a game, that's when you just want to, you know, just just take a load off from, from having a, you know, long day or something. Now, you know, so you could do more work, so you could just play the dang thing. I mean, come on. <sighs> but um, yeah, even though uh, even though Assassin's Creed Valhalla did had a, a great gameplay, I am still disappointed. I am disappointed that I can't hear the the story while playing it though which sucks but I did make a promise that I will make a gameplay for you guys so I'm gonna try to download the voice actor without switching my TV settings and see if that work if that doesn't work then I can either make a random make up a random story I could just make up a random story by voice acting at random, or I could make it scripted. Or, or I'll have you, or you guys can have me play something else. It's practically up to you guys, anyways. But, um, yeah. But, anyways, that's it with my review. If you like my video, please put a like. If you have any concerns or questions, please comment down below. And if you want to see more of my videos in the future, please press subscribe. This is Spartan, and I'm signing off.